Good morning to you. Today in this video, we're going to add some components to our Sun Gold power system. We have five batteries, 100 amp batteries, 48 volt, that run our system. Our system is, it's large. This is an 18,000 watt inverter. It runs everything in our house, our shop. Well, I'll say everything, but it does not run our oven and our clothes dryer because obviously those are huge draws and we run those at night um, after the sun goes down so we don't use those. And in doing it, run it this way, it basically gets us through these five batteries. will get us through the night um, and if I get up and go to work at you know, 6.45 in the morning, this thing has just started to recharge these batteries. So basically in this inverter, it's a hybrid inverter, it has a automatic um, um, charger, battery charger in it. So when these batteries get low, um, this will automatically kick in and use commercial power of our power in here. We'll use the commercial power to charge these batteries if there's no, you know, um, if there's no solar power coming in from the from the panels. So what we do is like right now I can go over there. See right now it's charging. It's using. It's using. Um, it's bypassing the system and charge running the house directly. But it also is charging these batteries to get them back up and running. So I figure that one battery lasts me about three hours. So if I have five batteries, that's 15 hours of, sun, of, of power without, <coughs> excuse me, without direct sunlight charging, charging the batteries. So then I, what I do is I just come in here because it's now morning and they've got two bars or you know, working on two clicks of charge. I'll come in here and I'll turn the breaker off. And so now the automatic charger is done. It won't kick back on until these batteries are, are getting or depleted again. Well, that's all good. and I mean, it, it works that way. But sometimes I leave in the morning and they're just, it just kicked over. And so there's not enough charge in the batteries. You know, because basically if I leave at 645, sometimes this thing has just kicked over automatically to charge these batteries. And it does not give them enough charge yet. So... Indefinitely, it sometimes it runs all day and charges the batteries along with the sun when the sun does come up. Um, so, like today, today is the fourth of July actually. Um, it is running these, it was charging these but right now. The sun's not even out, I mean, it's cloudy, and right now the system's putting out. System's putting out. Come on. So it's putting out 41 amps at 48 volts and the house is using 48 amps so right now it's just going to keep even until the sun actually comes out and starts charging these so what we're going to do today is we're going to add two more batteries to this which would get me um, roughly five to six hours more runtime at night and um, i mean we're running air conditioners at night we're running in the winter we're running heaters at night um, so that'll help immensely put two more batteries on here to basically just get us through the night until the sun comes up and has a chance to start charging um, when the sun's out like I said we just had this had 48 amps when the sun's out that's pushing close to 250 amps um, and I actually need to go up and clean the panels I haven't cleaned them for about a month now so I actually need to get up there and clean the panels and it'll be probably twice that Anyway, so we're going to add another rack and add two more batteries. And we're going to show you how we're doing it. Build the rack and then put in our bus bars on the side. I do not daisy chain from here to here to here to here. I don't do it that way. Um, I put it because this way it, they all draw off perfect. Individually, they all charge good. Um, so anyway, we're going to build another rack system and add two more batteries to our system and time into the bus bars. Let's get started. All right, we received our second rack from um, Sun Gold Power. That's for our battery rack. We're going to assemble that. So this video is part of it. will be on assembling this. Um, I already have one of these, and they work really well. These casters are very good. If you don't want that, once you put batteries on this, and the other one's 
My other one's got 500 pounds worth of batteries on it. And you lock those casters down, it don't move. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna build this one. Get it started, get building that. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. I'll just get myself a power screwdriver and a, a wrench to match those nuts and we'll throw this together real quick. Okay, so the best way I found last time to assemble this, start at the bottom, this is your bottom, that's where the, um, the roller goes in. The, uh, those things. Goes in there. And start at the bottom, start that first one, get it in. It goes so you have your two there, um, set screws there, and they just line up. So I go with that one, and I came down here to that one, so it's up and level, and then just start adding them in. It's that easy, and then go to the next, and then put another one over there. Okay, anyway, I'll uh, grab my power tool and just wrap it all those in back in a minute. Alrighty. So to assemble, the one thing I want to point out is these shelves, as you can see, I put that one in backwards. The actual side shot is down there. There's not one on each on each end. So the front doesn't have them, but the back, this is the back side, it's supposed to have one here also, which I put that one in backwards. So I gotta pull that one out and redo it. But there you go, it took about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then your wheels just screw on down here at the bottom. Okay, so to mount these batteries on the rack, you just slide them down in there, I do it upside down, it's easiest. You could do it flat, but it's a lot easier to do it this way. Then you just take a 10 inch millimeter, I mean 10 millimeter socket, and you put your uh, the nut in that socket to hold it up in there in place like this, and then just drop your screw in it, and tighten it up. All right, so I got the batteries in the rack. I ordered um, a bus bar like that, a double bus bar to go on the side of that, so I can hook these up the same way I'm hooking these up via the bus bar. On this, you can do it this way. I have this temped while I'm waiting for um, a two watt wire to jump from this one over to the other bus bars, to the main bus bar. So on this, you can go like this, like this is set up to go from here to here. You could go from that one to another battery to another battery. And then you would take your red here, the main feed. You put that there, and then you take the black feed. You sh I should have put this down here. So basically it was feeding all the way through the system. You see this one's got three bars, that one's got two bars. So it's not feeding, to, you know, exactly where over here they're all the same because of the way the bus bar set up. So if I actually move this down to here, it would, it would help level that, that charging out. But I'm not worried about it because I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it all apart right now. I'm just charging the batteries with it while I'm waiting for the other wire to get here and the, uh, and the um, bus bars so I can mount those on the side of this. But anyway, this is one way you can hook this up. It just isn't e as efficient as this for charging and discharging batteries equally. Um, anyway, guys, as soon as we get that other, uh, those other parts, we will set it up with the bus bars. Like I said, you can do it this way, and just you'd want to have your main leads that are tying your 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 uh, arrays together. You wanna you'd want to put this up here at, at the top battery, daisy chain them all, but you'd want the other side, the negative or whichever you're doing, to be down here at the bottom, so it's. So it's feeding, basically I hooked that up wrong, but it's not a biggie. Because like I said, it's not gonna stay that way for long. Um, and then these, these dip switches, I have this one set for six and this one set for seven. In the book, you can see how to set those. It's fairly, fairly easy. As long as you've got glasses, you can see them. Um, the, the daisy chaining between, it's just the, you know, I have the yellows going over here and tying into this one, so it's all, so they're all talking. It's it's simple, simple guys. Simple, simple. All right, we'll get back to you. All righty, final steps are done. Got our bigger gauge wire running over here, tying into the bus bars. Goes over and ties into these bus bars that I installed on the side. So if I want more here, I can add three more um, batteries to this side. And they are up and running, they're talking. And my Cat5 across over to this, over here. 
Um, I taped up these copper bars because they didn't come with covers, so I just used black tape. Hooked everything up and then taped them up just so they're not exposed. I'm going to do the same thing with this one, I think. It's just a negative. I don't know. That's, I'll probably do that. Anyway, it's, uh, like I said it's a sun gold rack, which was, took maybe 25, 30 minutes to put together. Just when you put it together, make sure you have the flat spot up. Because there's, inside is hollow. The flat spot goes up. Not, you know, that obviously the top goes that way. And then in the back, in the front, you don't have a screw in the front. But in the backs, there's an extra screw right there that goes that way to tie them together. So make sure you have them all pieced together the right way when you put them together. Those casters, I mean, it's pretty snug. And this one with 500 pounds on it. I'm moving it. I mean, I'm trying to move it. Anyway, guys, I used two, two gauge wire, two aug wire, not aug, but two aug, jumping from this one to this one. I mean, they only had like four, so, and they weren't long enough. So I put some 10 footers in, jump it over to this side. Then, so basically, the system runs now. All these batteries tie into these two um, bus, bus bars. Then, from the incoming is two aught wire, which feeds both bus bars. And then out of the bus bars going up to the inverter, that's an 18,000 watt inverter. So when it pulls DC power, it pulls a lot. Um, so then from here, I have a 2 watt wire and a 4 uh, uh, aught, not, I'm sorry, 4 aug, not a 4 aught. So 2 aug, I'm sorry, 2 watt wire and a 4 aug wire just feeding up here into this, to the up feed. Because when this really kicks in and starts producing a lot of power, this will pull about 300 amps DC power. Those get, when I just had the 2 aug, they were getting pretty warm. Um, so I added those and now no problem at all. So now when I charge this side, because we have 32 550 watt panels up on the roof. So when I charge the other side, the DC incoming, these are now, I mean, right now we're not pushing much power. It's probably, I don't know, 530 at night, 6, six o'clock at night. Sun's not on them no more, um, directly on them. So I don't have a problem. But like at 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you can touch these and they're a little warm. But not bad and that's when they're pushing like 250 amps 300 amps um, they do all right on this side but that side will draw a lot but i, I 18 000 watts so you're you're taking a lot of dc power to create ac power all sun gold love sun gold i have no problems with it whatsoever if you just know how to install it no problem all right guys thanks for watching um, I'll post some uh, links for these for these batteries and the actually I'll post everything the links for all this stuff in the description Thanks for watching. Have a great day